What you're going to hear right now is a short clip from uh, the Novus Ordo Missy debate against Peter Diamond and myself. And particularly, I post this short clip from the debate. Uh, I will have the full debate up very soon this week. But I post this clip because it is relevant to this video I am making to um, show the confusion that Peter Diamond had during the debate. Um, there is a point during this debate where Peter Diamond usually says that what I'm saying is false. He attributes the patristic quotations I use as being spurious. And then he begins saying that my, my, oh, you know what, you can't really trust my quotes because uh, even Second Clement was spurious. And if you listen to my response, I, I say that it is ridiculous that he brings up Second Clement because I didn't use any spurious quotes. And I say you can even toss in Ignatius. Peter Diamond didn't get it. Peter Diamond didn't understand that there were many false spurious Ignatian epistles circulating during his, during his time and even afterwards. The thing is, Peter Diamond kept insisting that I was upset and that I endorsed Second Clement. You'll hear clearly how I point out that not only is Second Clement spurious, but I don't even know why Peter Diamond used that. He thinks that my patristic quotations were incorrect, and that was his way of wriggling out of the fact that the fathers were unanimous, that this is my body and this is my blood, or this is the chalice of my blood, were pretty much all that was needed to bring about a valid anamnesis. Later, you'll say that Peter Diamond, you'll hear Peter Diamond say that I am wrong about St. Ambrose, and he says that St. Ambrose does say that you need the words for many. And in fact, right afterwards, you will hear that St. Ambrose does not say that at all. In regards to the comments that Peter Diamond made as to the Father's teaching sola fide, he's absolutely correct. Some of the Fathers did teach sola fide, not in the sola fide in pro Protestant manner. Sola fide, faith working through love, faith and works, in that sense. Never, never did they teach the Protestant notion of sola fide, and Peter Diamond doesn't understand that the Fathers used the term faith alone many times, but never in a Protestant sense. And if he had understood that in our last encounter, he wouldn't have brought this lightweight argument up. But anyhow, you're going to hear Peter Diamond's confusion here and uh, his utter denial that the patristic quotations that I had used were uh, valid. And indeed, uh, it is quite interesting. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you enjoy the full debate later this week. God bless you. That many of the fathers taught sola fide, faith alone, which is completely untrue. You, you state these things without any... Uh, specific references at all, and you just throw them out there. But furthermore, as I pointed out earlier, it was the common practice in the ancient church to remove the words of consecration in liturgical books with the understanding that they would be said. This was known as the discipline arcana, okay, the, or the secret discipline. And so just because it's not in a particular ancient book doesn't prove your point. This has already been covered. And in fact, the Salmon Ticensis, a group of theologians in the Middle Ages, specifically addressed this point at length, and they pointed out how all of these, or many of these ancient liturgies, especially in the eastern part of the church, were corrupted. There are many things that are attributed to fathers of the church in texts which they never said. Uh, anyone who has studied the early church fathers knows that, that there are many questionable texts floating around, just like uh, the second letter attributed to Clement is of questionable authority. And so to cite these things, and not all of those fathers said, this is my body, this is my blood, is all you need. That's simply untrue. But furthermore, even if it were true, it wouldn't make any difference because we have the papal magisterium, which has told us that it's not just this is my body, this is my blood. It says that it's all of the words, including for you and for many unto the remission of sins. You also make the completely irrelevant argument. You say, Trent, says these passages of scripture express the real presence. I agree. Or, so what? And I would like you to cite the specific passage, and if we examined it, we could see how ridiculous your argument is. That, that's irrelevant. It didn't say that those passages of scripture in and of themselves constitute valid forms of consecration. So for you to say that Trent says that they deal or refer to the real presence, that's completely irrelevant. So you can say it all day long. It proves nothing. Secondly, you say that the quotes that I bring forward from St. Alphonsus, St. Thomas, the Catechism of Trent, and Pope Benedict XIV, that's quite an array against you, that they're only referring to all in the sense of universalism. Completely wrong. 
they're addressing whether all is proper. They're addressing whether the word is proper, okay? And they're saying, no, it's not proper because all would express that it's for everyone, and it's not for everyone. And so what you are saying there is simply untrue. And you talk about none of the fathers say many is necessary. Completely untrue. For instance, St. Ambrose, and this is quoted by St. Thomas in the Summa, in his work on the sacraments, St. Ambrose says that the words of consecration is affected, it comes about through the words of the Lord. And the words of the Lord, which affect the consecration, we know from the Council of Florence, are all of the words, including shed for you and for many unto the remission of sins. And furthermore, St. Thomas basically takes the best of the fathers. He, he culls what is most precious in the fathers. That's what he's known for. He's not infallible, but that's what he does in his work. And he obviously believed all of these words were necessary, drawing upon what he saw in the fathers of the church. But the absurdity of what you're saying is shown by the fact that, and I would like you to address this, would, would you say that the Catechism of Trent, or would you say that St. Thomas Aquinas was wrong when he said that the gospel accounts are not sufficient forms of consecration? Was that a wrong statement? You can address that in your response. Dear Trent. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll start now. All right, well, uh, in the next time that Peter Diamond has a chance to speak, he can go ahead and he can quote just where Thomas Aquinas says that and read it out loud, and I will respond to it. Right now, I'm going to respond to other comments that he's made. Um, it is lovely the fact that patristic quotations cause Peter Diamond to, I, I suppose, shudder, and he begins to, to, to regard Clement and the second letter and several other documents as being spurious. You know, you can toss Ignatius in there too, uh, Peter, if you want. The fact of the matter is I haven't mentioned a single spurious uh, patristic quotation, and I've studied these uh, these um, these uh, patristic quotes. Uh, none of them are questionable. They're not spurious. They're valid. I've got a paper that I've written with every single one of these quotes, not only dealing with them in Latin but in Greek, and if you'd like, I can I can send that to you. Uh, I can even send it to you during the debate if you'd like. Uh, anyhow, moving onwards, uh, Trent did say that the that uh, the forms of consecration were perfectly valid. If it, it did not say that it it would bring about a, an, a valid anamnesis, then we wouldn't have valid sacrificial aspects, and Luke twenty two nineteen would not be a valid uh, passage for for holy orders. And the same will be would be uh, of um, one Corinthians uh, eleven. Uh, anyhow. Um, uh, it is hilarious, uh, and I say hilarious with all due respect to Peter Diamond, but I can't uh, help uh, but say that it's ridiculous that he keeps on bringing up the same thing. And uh, in fact, he answered my very own uh, argument that I've been trying to hammer in, but he doesn't get it. He keeps saying that these individuals are saying for all cannot be used in the sense of, and I believe he said, they are addressing it as improper due to it, uh, referencing everyone. Well, uh, Peter Diamond, I've said it about a thousand times. If you want, I can say it a thousand and one times. Specifically in reference to universalism, all cannot be used. I don't know if Peter Diamond's going to ever get that, but I've said it over and over. I don't know how many times I have to say it for him to understand. Anyhow, in regards to the fathers and, and any of them saying for many needs to be used, I think the past couple of months I've studied the fathers so much that I, I was hoping he would use such an argument, and I was hoping he would bring up the argument of Ambrose, because Ambrose never says that for many must be used. Maybe Peter Diamond missed it, but I'm going to read it for him. I'm going to read it slowly for him, so maybe it can sink in. Ambrose tells us this. He says that another nature comes about after Christ proclaims, this is my body. And after he calls the blood his blood, its nature is changed. It's funny how Ambrose doesn't tell us after Christ says, for many, We've got the elements being changed in the body and blood of Christ. I don't think Ambrose would have brought about a silly, fallacious argument like Mr. Diamond. But since Mr. Diamond is going to continue being insistent about the form of consecration and disregard the fact that not a single early father viewed for many or mystery of faith or really anything besides this is my body or this is the chalice of my blood or this is my blood is necessary to bring about a valid sacrament, will continue pressing the early church to Mr. Diamond in hopes that he'll finally understand that he really doesn't know what he's talking about. Cyril of Jerusalem, quoting 1 Corinthians 11, he says, and he said, take, eat, this is my body. And having taken the cup and given thanks, he said, take, drink, this is my blood. Yet another early father that identified this is my body and this is my blood as the necessary words to affirm the change of the elements. John of Damascus said, this is my body and this is my blood and do this in remembrance of me. He affirms, John of Damascus, that once God's word, this is my body and this is my blood and this do in remembrance of me are intoned.